everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Today, to uh, today topic. Today's topic is bags, luxury bags, fashion bags, but with the connotation of iconic and icon. I have been asked many times, but a lot of you whether or not certain bags of today, like you've been sending me model numbers, photos of bags, asking me tips, what bag to purchase. And oftentimes, actually most of the times, it, the photo would be attached to a question and the question being, will this bag become iconic? Will this bag hold its value? Will this brand become iconic? And so on and so forth. Well, here's the news for you guys. Um, As painful as this may sound, as much as we might love some new models of bags coming out, I honestly don't believe uh, that there will be another iconic bag anytime soon, coming from any brand whatsoever, not even from Chanel. Uh, I don't believe the boy bag will become iconic. I think the boy bag ultimately is a very mundane, very everyday type of bag. Um... The icons, okay, let's cut it short because I could go from model to model and describe every model of every brand that is out there and that would last forever. Let's just put it this way. Uh, for a bag to become iconic, it requires, or better yet, let's say it in the past, it required back in the day a lot for it to today be denominated as an icon. The Kelly bag, the Birkin, and the 255 Chanel bag. Those are the three iconic bags, really. There are more out there, but these are the three on the Olymp... Uh, you know, they're on the Olympus. They are on the top. They're, they are the, the goddesses or the gods of, of all the bags. And they are icons because they came in a time... They were made by, by design houses that are so special. The 255 bag was made by Coco Chanel. She created it herself. There's already a myth behind it within its creation as well. The Kelly bag was created for Grace Kelly, allegedly because she wanted to wear something in front of her belly to hide the fact that she was pregnant. That's iconic. We don't have Grace Kelly anymore. We don't have a princess or a queen that, that is also royalty in cinema in Hollywood acting for none less than Alfred Hitchcock in his movies we don't have anymore a self-made woman that that was an orphan and that in those times when women had basically no rights at all made her way pushed her way up to the top of the world as Coco Chanel and then created this bag that was meant to make life easier for women to free their hands so they could wear their bag over the shoulder instead of, you know, always in the crook of their arm. Well, I mean, Chanel at the end ended up wearing a double chain always like that. But you know what I mean? Plus, give it the time. An iconic bag needs the time. The Kelly, the Birkin, the 255. Decades and decades have passed. And now these bags are icons. You cannot hire some designer... Now, the guy who created um, the boy bag is works now for Dior. They just keep, you know, bouncing on and off. You know, these designers kind of just move from one uh, designer house to the other. And uh, it's like a game at this point. And they just then create tweaks and perks and slightly, you know, different elements for the same type of bag over and over and over again for different companies, basically. The whole system, the way it works, the way it's conceived, the way design and fashion and marketing is conceived today does not allow bags to become iconic, really. It's like fashion has bit itself in its own butt or in its own tail because it wants to create and produce and overproduce and it wants you to desire a piece that's been like spat out into the market immediately, purchase it immediately and they already are building up an idea for the next one coming up next season and they're going to want you, they're going to make you desire, they're going to make you want to spend all your hard-earned cash on it to buy that bag as well. And then once that season is over, they're going to do the same over and over and over and over again. And they know it's tricky because if they create a bag that's really very iconic that everybody wants, if that bag is overly available, well, then it won't be that iconic after all because the desirability factor 
will have disappeared, you see. And in today's day and age, also with the internet, with the speed in which we have access to information, that also, as a paradox, blocks off the capability of a product to become iconic. When the Kelly, when the Birkin, when the 255 came out, there was no internet. There was phone, yeah, TV, yeah, in black and white, but information would travel much slower. And for something to achieve a position globally, it would take it weeks and months even, and years. When today, you know, I could post a video of my cat pooping and it could go viral if the poop is the right color. You know what I mean? We have lost complete and utter capability of judgment here. We, we are not even capable of really seeing through all the shit that is literally thrown at us as viral, viral, important, important, great, great, you know, this is iconic, iconic. All of these genius, you know, all of these huge words are just like thrown at us, like slaps in our face constantly, and then we get lost. We get lost in this sea of shite, literally, not capable of distinguishing what is really quality, what not. I quote Oscar Wilde often, but I'll never stress enough to quote him over and over and over again if necessary, and now it's necessary. Oscar Wilde already said it centuries ago. <laughs> Today we know the price of everything and the value of nothing. And it's true. This is really true. And there are only a few things that still hold their true value. And here we get to the point, a lot of you also ask me, I just purchased this bag, Deco, but I'm not so sure if I want to keep it. I might be sending it back or returning it because I'm not sure if it's going to hold its value. I have to admit, now as much as I love each and every one of you, and this is nothing against any one of you in particular, I don't like that sort of question. It really is beginning to annoy me. Stop purchasing a bag for its value, for the fact that it hold its val holds its value, for the fact that you're going to justify a huge amount of money you're going to spend on it and saying, oh, but I could resell it one day. You could resell anything one day if you know how to resell it, if you know how to talk, if you know how to sell, if you know how to maintain your pieces in pristine condition and treat them well and yada, yada. You know, you know the buzz. But this is not the point. The 255 bag, the Kelly and the Birkin did not become iconic because they had a great resale value from day one. No, that's not what makes a bag iconic. That's what makes a bag cheap. If you think of it only in terms of, will it hold its value? Will your heart and your experience and what you live with that product, that bag, will that hold its value? Will you allow that bag to live with you? Will you allow that bag to be a part of your life? Will you allow that bag to, together with you as a frame to your identity? Will you allow that bag to be a part of your experience, your life? Will you let it in to your daily routine? Will it become something that you use without even thinking? You know, like when you brush your teeth, you don't really think about it. The moment you're brushing your teeth, it's so instinctive. That toothbrush is such an intrinsic part of your daily routine that your brain kind of just shuts off and you just brush your teeth instinctively and mechanically in a way you don't even think about it really. That toothbrush is iconic. That toothbrush holds its value in that respect because it is such a chained and linked part of your daily routine that you have no choice but to consider it iconic for yourself. If you allow the bag that you've purchased to become such a strong bond, you know, to your daily routine, that's where icons are born. Now, generalizingly, generalizing, speaking generally, there is no more Grace Kelly. There is no more Coco Chanel out there. You know, these huge personalities that are needed also to contribute to a creation of an icon and an iconic bag, if we're talking bags in this particular video, but as you can see, this topic can also be generalized. We can also go further into other directions. But sticking just to bags, we're lacking the, the, the personalities. We're also lacking that presence. And why? Again, because these iconic personalities that almost all of them had died off in 2016. We still have a lot of them left, thank God. But let's hope they stick around for a long 
time to come. Um, the youth that is out there is so speeded up. It's so smacked in your face. There is no time to give these famous personalities, you know, the right product and let them wear it for a long time. A lot of designers from Dolce Gabbana to, I don't know, maybe even Gucci. I'm not so sure about Gucci because now they have, um, they, they, they've changed the, the, the artistic direction. So I'm not so sure. I think they already have bags with names. No, not really. With the new Gucci, I, still, I, I think we still don't have bags that are dedicated to some personality, to some model, to some actor. You know what I mean? Um, a lot of designers are trying to do that. But that doesn't work nowadays. You know, Birkin is Birkin. Did, what are you going to call a bag? Uh, Taylor Swift? It's a joke. You know what I mean? With all due respect to Taylor Swift fans, great musician, great voice, but not the right character to carry a bag that has her name and make it become iconic because the times are not right for that. There is no time for that. She wears a different outfit every day. In the 50s, there would be a period, months in which a certain personality would be wearing the same style, not the same outfit every day, but the same style. Repeating it over and over and over again until it becomes really rooted within our memory patterns and our own kind of memory of a DNA memory of fashion, if you want it. We're lacking that time. We're not given that time. Of course, we could be given that time if we were strong enough to take that time for ourselves. And that's why I have decided not to purchase new anymore in this 2017. As I said before in my other videos, I will link them in the description box down below. I will be only purchasing secondhand and vintage luxury products this year um, because I do not believe in what is being fed to us uh, nowadays. Fashion and luxury nowadays, the prices are going up and up and up. The quality is going lower and lower and lower. And there's a huge disproportion and unbalance between the price and the quality price, quality. And until these things aren't brought a little bit closer together, I'm done. I am not contributing to this economy because it's not worth it. What is iconic has already been done and produced. And imagine the quantity of product that is produced every year. It's not like what is last season, what has been produced the year before just disappears, vanishes into thin air. No, this is a lot of product, materials, fabrics, stuff that is cluttering and filling up the world. There's so much material out there that becomes garbage and trash. And just like, it's like a, envision a hoarder that's just like stacking up shit and trash and never letting go of anything. Well, somebody's shit might be somebody else's treasure. And I'm of that notion also for my house, you know, the furniture I purchased is only, and this has been since years now. I've already been doing this since years, but that's because I love 60s and 70s furniture. But I only purchase secondhand furniture. I do not purchase new furniture. Very rarely. If I need a new washing machine, yes, but I'm talking chairs, sofas, stuff like that, tables. I hunt down vintage because there's so much material out there that's already been produced that somebody doesn't want to use anymore. So why create trash? I prefer to use it, to give it a new life. Plus, these old pieces always tell a story. So it's incredible. That's what creates iconic movement. You need your personality. You need your strength and you need your character in order to kind of be able to pinpoint what is important for you. What will underline your individuality, your personality, your character? And once you've pinpointed that out and once you're sure of yourself, everything you touch becomes iconic. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm showcasing this iconic bag here. Look at that. It's from Fall Winter 1996. You've seen this bag in my top seven vintage bags, uh, vintage luxury bags, but I'll uh, post the link in the description box down below. This is kind of reminiscent of 40s Italy, uh, Sicilian kind of style, Dolce Gabbana, even though this one was interpreted in velvet for Fall Winter 1996. This is a freaking iconic bag, even though it doesn't really have a name, even though... You see it and you think, oh, grandma. No, I see it and I think timeless. Value beyond value. There is no value. It's timeless and it's precious because I love it. It's priceless because I wear it and I own it. 
And that's all that has to be important to you guys. When you select, if you love something, we're talking luxury here, whether it be secondhand or new, whatever, you don't really need luxury. You want it, you desire it, you crave it. So if there's something you want to purchase, it's not because, oh my God, you need it because you don't have any bag in your life. No, you don't even purchase it for the value fact. You purchase it for the love and attachment you have to it. I ask myself every time I see this bag, what story does it tell? The person that had it before me, because I purchased it secondhand. I mean, it's a vintage bag from 1996, so it's 21 years old now. What stories does it tell? It inspires so much. Every time I look at it and I smell it, there, there's a story there. And that's priceless. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you like, you've liked this video. If you have, please do thumb it up and let me know what you think about it in the description box down below. I'm wearing DNG 1990, uh, spring summer 1996. Uh, and uh, 1990s Christian Lacroix cross, sweetie darling, very ab fab today. So vintage through and through. Um, don't forget to subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. I'm also on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. So no matter how many times they look at you and judge you for what you're wearing and they think you're wearing your grandma's stuff, so what? I'm proud of my grandparents. I'm proud of my grandmother, goddammit. And I never give up on love. See you soon. Take care. Love you. Bye.